Hey folks, welcome back to the Nerd Zone, back again with my Padawan again, Hope. How you doing, Hope? I'm doing alright. And I thought I was your apprentice, not Padawan. Same thing, tomato, tomato. <laughs> okay, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. <sighs> yeah, well, so, you're into animation, right? Yeah, I do a little bit of it. I'm not good at it. What's the I worst can... animated series you've seen? And I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the Transformers original cartoon. Yeah, I'm, I'm well-versed in Transformers cartoons. What do you think of the old 80s shows in that era? What did you like about them? I actually... I'm actually thinking about it, and there's, like, nothing that I can, like, name about it. Probably just because of the fact that, one, it was more comedic. Yeah. Especially when you look at what... Like how much we progressed from then. Like yeah. characters would just sit there and just open and like they'd be like guppy fish where they would just open and. Close Please tell them me out. you hate Hanna Barbera. Mm. I'm not a big fan of Hanna Barbera. I'm sorry. I I hate I freaking hate Velma. Okay, then I will say this: the the best, and I this can be argued. This can be argued. The best Scooby Doo show that ever existed was Mystery Incorporated. It was the last good one. Yeah, I could I could agree with that. Because I'm sorry, it was the first one that actually I I like dark lore. I like the lore of what happened. Like yeah, the city was cursed because of human Great. stupidity. Great, yeah. And we can all agree that like most disasters, including like Titanic. Yep. Human error. The blimp. Have you seen Al? Have you seen what's the name of that show? I know you've seen Owl House. Um, yeah, that one's a good, that one's good. And I will say this: animation. When you when you do an animation, always keep in mind the story and the characters, because as soon as you do like, as soon as you like, the reason animation is good, like really good animation in some companies, is yeah. because they follow the story so closely. They make sure every little detail is in there. Right. Owl House led to really good theories. The show I'm into, Lego Monkey Kid, which is by Flying Bark, who also did Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2012. They're one of the better companies out there. And I would say they're better than Disney and Pixar based on animation level because they do 2D animation. You know, and my it's a mix between, like, Look, my teenage Japanese kind yeah. of anime style and modern and... What we see with on a TV. I'm gonna it's show. Good. I'm gonna show my age right here, right now. I hate four kids TV. I hated it, but I will say this: the TMT, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the two th early two thousands. Perfect. I love that show. That was the best TMT Ninja Turtles in I my like, opinion. I like twenty twelve based on its animation because it gave. <laughs> The, he, <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, I'm not dramatic or anything. No, it, it, I'm, I'm trying to word things. One, you want to have story in mind when you do animation. Oh, yeah. So it's just something like Turtles. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Turtles. Or just in general. It's your, before you do anything with animation, yeah. story is your number one focus. What can you put in the story? Well, How much can you progress yeah. in the story? Like, my, my... I actually am revamping my script for season one yeah. of my show, which I thought was done. Oh, no, it wasn't. I was like... I realized I could add in more details onto the script for season one of my show based off of season two and season three because another key element that you want to use when you use animation is foreshadowing. Right. Hidden details is what we use in foreshadowing animation. And I'm not an animation expert. I'm an amateur. Yeah. But I notice like small details, like cluing in that your right. character is going to turn evil by slowly shifting the personality like Star Wars the Clone Wars did with Anakin yeah uh, Clone Wars the was, Clone Wars did a great job of showing Anakin's character progression yeah. or slash degression Ahsoka's pure character progression yes. in that show was amazing yes they, because they and the animation as as the sh also when a show starts you will notice the animation quality yeah. is extremely poor but it slowly gets better I'm going to bring this up again Owl House the pilot was a little ch chunky and such. Yeah. Teenage Rise of the Mutant Ninja chunky again. Lego Monkey King, chunky. Michael How'd you feel chunky. about the main... Everything is chunky at first, but then as the animators get on with their... Like, it's like how you perfected art. You do yeah. practice and practice. The smoother the animation is, the flow of it, the pacing is uh, better. Have you seen Mystery... Not Mystery Creek. Um, the Mystery Shack? Yeah. I think that's the name of it, right, Mister Shack? I believe so. No. I don't remember. It was the name of that show. I forgot it. The season, fin the series from now, if that show is yeah. really. I would. I would even argue that my little, 
and I'm going to really show that I'm a girl here and say, oh, my little pony generation God. four. Oh, um, God. Oh, Hope, I might be a nerd, and I might be feminine to a certain extent, but I'm not that no, feminine. No, no, right. This is the reason why I'm going to mention it. I feel it. so masculine you to me. Season 9, look at season 1 of My Little Pony, and then look at yeah. the end of the series, including with the movie. The animation style changed. You can even look at it with anime, too. Yeah. Anime, like, Inuyasha is a big, big attribute to that, because season 1 of that show, look at the artwork, and then yeah. you look at season, like, Hmm, I don't remember what season they changed like they changed like characters and I realized it like off the dime was probably season six or season seven of Inuyasha. You guys can watch that too. Have you seen Fully Cooley? Yeah. What do you think of the animation style for that? What stands about that anime? Again, it's like most other animes. Good it, it's chunky I, I will always say that. It's random numbers, as heck. It's yeah, it's random. That's what's great about it. But like the most important thing is most animation when it starts out is chunky. Then it slowly progresses yeah. into better fluid. Some shows are just right off the bat. May have like one episode where it's like pacing's off a bit. But other than that, it flows so fluidly. I can bring so many examples. Again, Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtles, I didn't Rise, like 12 and 12. Yeah. Lego Monkey Kid, which is made by the same company. Um... I would say Craig of the Creek also did really Craig good of the thing. Creek is amazing. Yeah, that one, that one was The D&D nerds, the D&D nerds, the, D &D nerds, the goth chicks, that, yeah, that's um, a good show. Gravity Falls, that one too. Gravity Falls, that is what I was thinking of. Gravity, Gravity Falls, Falls. Yeah, have you seen that, that? If I wasn't mentioning... Have you seen the whole series? Yes, I have seen the whole series. Okay, the series finale, finale, series finale. Again, this is why I say it's like, Gravity, like the reason why I bet you Gravity Falls is... When you when you do animation, you p keep in mind the story, you keep in mind the flow, you keep in mind the pacing, but you also yeah. put weight on the characters. When season one finale, when they, I believe, is season one finale or season one or season two opener, I, maybe it's in between the two, where they open the portal and... Spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah spoilers. spoilers, spoilers alert. Um, but when they open the portal and Stan's yeah. other brother comes out, look at the character's facial expressions. No matter, like... And I will talk about, I will go into a deep dev, death dive into another one that does this. Yeah. Their expressions, the way their movements are, how Ma Mabel looks yeah. like. She had to make a choice and she looks, she takes, she like winces, knowing full well the, con the consequences, but trusting her gut. You can see like the emotions in the character's yeah. body. That's what animation is supposed to do. You, you remind me of like... Mabel. Thank you. <laughs> you honestly do remind me of her, yeah. okay? Honestly, but you do. Another animation that I will mention is one that I have done a deep dive study into. I've researched it beyond anything besides Lego Monkey Kid, but yeah. that's because that's my new obsession, and I yeah, will yeah, clearly yeah, call yeah, it an obsession, yeah, yeah. is Avatar The Last Airbender. That animation style. Woo! Because here's something that live action does better than most animation is the constant flow of movement. Characters continue to breathe. Like when you're talking yeah. and you're breathing and you're going through emotions. After the last airbender, nothing stands still for long with the characters. Character dynamics, character voice acting, which is another big thing with oh, animation. Yeah. You need your voice actors not to give it their all, but also give Show them chemistry. Like, chemistry yeah. with your character voice char cast is impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I do, like, two characters I do, which is Twista, which is, this is her voice, pretty much, and Dove, which is my normal voice. Yeah. Twister is more British, and Dove is more... American, not, Canadian. American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you just call my voice Canadian? Thank you. No, I... <laughs> just heathen, heathen, heathen. Oh, whatever. I'm I'm just I'm not, I'm not bashing people from Canada. But but yeah. Yeah, I'm bashing people from Canada. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like your animation style depends on the story and always keep in mind I will again I'm going to keep hammering that point in story story story. Yeah. That's what matters in animation. As soon as you lose story, as soon as you lose that you're going to fail. Uh, some 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 cart some animated shows do pull off no oh, story though. Mm, Star of the Forces of Evil though, 
that's amazing. Yes, yeah, Steven yeah, Universe. They lost their story halfway through season. And that's two. when I went to hack. Yeah. And yeah, and that's what I'm like saying. If you lose a story, your animation is going to go crap. Right, right. Your whole entire your whole entire fan base is going to go crazy. Yeah. This is why when I'm like when I'm writing, I literally put in my all. I put every single detail because I know that the audience, the readers, anyone who is like right. consuming the media will read it and they will envision it and if it's animation that envision should be right in front of their eyeballs crap you know what i'm looking you know what i think would be a great image show and they're kind of doing this already have you seen vox machina yeah the critical role image show mm -hmm. what do you like about that show that actually is, i will say again while the story isn't like as apparent as like lego monkey kids influence the journey to the west uh avatar the last air bender with Buddhism. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's not, there's not a lot of influence in there just yet when you first watch it. But, oh boy, is it fun. And the, cha and the chaos of, again, your voice cast, your characters, they all kind of just bounce off on another. So you have seen Vox Machina, huh? What? Vox Machina, the D&D. &D, yeah, uh, I'm saying, like... This you know what I mean? You would love it, the animation style. From, no, it's I'm, like, I'm continuing to talk about it. You're, like, the animation style goes yeah. well with, like, the story. Yeah. Mi not check that one off the list. You guys got that one down. Action. The action is fluid. It's it has weight too. Like when every whenever there's a blow, there's like this like the muscles of each yeah. character moves and has weight behind it. Yeah. Which is something that I see a lot in a lot of the shows that I like to watch. There there's weight in character movement, which is something that most shows forget. Plus, it's attention to and like it's like shout out to the D and D community. It's yes. shout out to the D and D community. The, the attention to detail, like that's another thing when you yeah. do the animation. Don't, don't half bleep it. Yeah. I will bleep myself there. <laughs> Let me bleep yeah. myself real quick. Um, don't, don't like quit halfway through. I know it's struggling. I know if you're an amateur and you're first starting out, you're yeah. not gonna like your style at first, but. Practice, practice, practice. I practice more of my art style because it changes, it moves, it right. moves, it flows. Lately, I've been getting into a constant pattern of, oh, this is how I draw my characters. Right. While you're doing that, keep like keep some of these attributes in mind. There's weight, and then there's push and pull, which yeah. is when a character is about to do an action, they'll like, whenever you like lift your head up, you go down yeah. a little bit and then lift your head up. Always don't like don't make their head just go. Right. And jerk up. There's, like, have a little bit of, like, gravity on the right. situation. So, and yeah. And keep, also keep in mind, and I'm, like, giving tips. I feel like I'm giving tips. I have no degree in animation, and I feel like I'm, I'm giving so many tips. I only have a certificate in journalism. Look what I'm doing. True. Yeah. I'm an amateur. I will say that. But I learned so much based off others. And that's another thing with animation is, like, if when you do a TV show, look how much inspiration they get from... Video games. Video games. But, like... And, there's references um, to there's so many gaming trans, references trans, trans, like, and modern and, day like animation. Shira. Shows. Like yeah, Shira's animation versus what it was before, and look where it is now. Look at all the D and D like, references so many and influences. Look at all the D and D references in Adventure Time. All the D and D references in Vox Machina. So, you know. What I'm saying is, don't like clearly rip it off. But I'm homage. A couple series homage. Homage. Yeah, but don't like completely rip off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can no. Do a couple, can we? For the last subject, for the yeah, <laughs> Teen Titans Go. <coughs> Teen Titans Go. <coughs> hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Teen Just Titan die already. No, the Teen Titans Go has one. I will say this: it has one of the worst animation styles. And Flash. It's not because of the. It's not because of the cartoony look. It's because they. It, there's unnaturalness. There's Do no you, seriousness behind the characters. You know what the most fricked up thing about the Teen Titans Go is? The creators are the people that make it are toxic as heck. Yeah, they are. They literally got a freaking sick handicap kid to come in, make a wish kid to come in. I've tell you sorry before. They had they made they brought in a make a wish kid and put him on the show and said, "Hey, look, this kid likes us." Yeah, and like that's just toxic. That again, and this is why I don't watch like Teen Titans Go. I I tried to watch it and I couldn't stand the animation style because again, they <sighs> yeah. there's no cohesive story. You need to have a basic plot line. I hate it because they sh a, yeah. When you don't have a plot line, y the animation is going to go as crazy as your characters and the shenanigans they're going to go through. It's and that my base, is that's not interesting. My biggest issue with it dumps on the original fan base. And yes, because guess what? They forgot the main component. People 
media, any like anyone on this, anyone who's listening to this podcast, anyone can agree on Earth. We don't get, we don't want just a slice of life with like Teen Titans or anything like that, or any sort of media from like beyond from 1990 to 2000s, 1980s to 2000s. Heck, we don't even like we don't even like Mickey Mouse now because yeah. It what do people need? So what do people need? They need story. They want story. They don't want these we random need mythol- shenanigans. Humanity or- needs stories to build. Let me quote this. Um, humans need fantasy in order to be human. Yes, and the, that's why one of, my, one of my stories uses so many different elements from everything I've done. Like, everything yeah. into everything. It's just everything I've learned from the shows I've watched will be influenced in the show. And you'll see it. You'll see it yeah. someday. Um, yeah. Hopefully, when I'm not not angry enough at my script writing skills. So, but like, if I had to bring this in a bit, I want to talk about our favorite stuff. The key thing we were going to talk about on this, Busy Pop. Yes. Do you like Busy Pop? What stands out about her? What do you love about her? I love her animation style because of the fact that it hits every single component that animation is. What you use for animation, there's story, there's character movement. None of the characters sit still. Like, Luna, like, one of the scenes, like, in the first episode, Blitz is talking, and you can see Luna is scrolling through her phone. There's movement yeah. in the finger, f- which, by the way, this takes a lot of time to page. And so, like, when we're, like, talking about these episodes, with a normal studio, it might take months for one, for, like, like half a season to be completed. I waited a whole entire, like, three years for season four to drop for one of my favorite shows. Yeah, I waited six years for a Fox in Space to come out. I'm uh, waiting, yeah. and it took ten years for Hasbun Hotel to come out because yeah. they changed. They changed character designs and the story, and they changed so much of it. Be- but Hasbun, but Hasbun Hotel caused a spinoff called Hell of a Boss, and the reason why I love Hell of a Boss a little bit more than I like Hasbun Hotel, which, oh boy, that might start some. Just say it, preach, sister, it preach. Won't, it it won't. I hopefully this won't cause too much anger, but I like. I know Hasbro Hotel only had the pilot, but I Which? love, I love just Hell of a Boss way more than Hasbro Hotel because characters have chemistry. You can see it in the animation. Yeah, but Charlie. I I know, and I like that's the one thing that's like most people are gonna be like, really, you like Hell of a Boss more? Yes, because character expression. Like in the original, yeah, it was, I would. It was s- mostly humor. Yeah. It was mostly humor. Hell of a Boss tackles so many good dark topics like trauma and things and and abuse there yeah. i will say abuse in this the that's reason fine I mentioned that is when you do those dark topics you have to make keep in mind the animation style as well yeah and they did wonderfully and the last episode. Do you like the writing, the characters, oh, the yes, lore? I love the writing. I love the story. I love how they built the world. That's something else with animation. Build your world. You know the whole point of Hell, the whole point of Hello Boss and Hasman Hotel. Most of these people are good people. Yeah, they're good. And people. And the question is, why are they down here in the first place? And like, wait, look, you know There's how the theories look at out the, there that heaven is corrupt, and I totally agree. Just because have you seen the angels and how they treat like mm-hmm. mortal people? Like they, the episode where the cherubs come down. They literally treat their own kind like. Dirt and like. I think the point busy pop is trying. I feel like next time when when we are when we come back on a podcast. Yeah, next Friday we will talk about like has been hotel and all the theories and such. So keep in. So see that soon. Yeah, I will say this. I think the key point about what I love about busy pop is like, and this is actually a very spiritual thing. Like you know, it kind of represents how organized religion rejects the such great, wonderful, kind people just because they're different hey folks welcome back to the nerd zone back again with my paddle on again hope how you doing hope i'm doing all right and i thought it was your apprentice not paddle on same thing tomato tomato <laughs> okay tomato tomato potato potato <sighs> yeah well so you're in an animation right yeah i do a little bit of it i'm not good at it what's the I worst can... animated series you've seen and i'm i'm sure you're familiar with the transformers original cartoon yeah, I'm, I'm well-versed in Transformers cartoons. What do you think of the old 80s shows in that era? What did you like about them? I actually... I'm actually thinking about it, and there's, like, nothing that I can, like, name about it. Probably just because of the fact that, one, it was more comedic. 
Yeah. Especially when you look at what, like, how much we progressed from then. Like, yeah. characters would just sit there and just open and, like, they'd be like guppy fish where they would just open and close Please tell me out. you hate Hannah Barbera. Mm. I'm not a big fan of Hannah Barbera. I'm sorry. I, I hate, I freaking hate Velma. Okay, then, I will say this, the, the best, and I this can be argued, this can be argued, the best Scooby-Doo show that ever existed was Mystery Incorporated. It was the last good one. Yeah, I could, I could agree with that. Because, I'm sorry, it was the first one that actually, I, I like dark lore, I like the lore of what happened, like, yeah. the city was cursed because of human Agreed. stupidity. Agreed, yeah. And we can all agree that, like, most disasters including like titanic yep human error the blimp have you seen out have you seen what's the name of that show i know you've seen owl house um yeah that one's a good that one's good and i will say this animation when you when you do an animation always keep in mind the story and the characters because as soon as you do like as soon as you like, the recent animation is good, like, really good animation in some companies, is yeah. because they follow the story so closely. They make sure every little detail is in there. Right. Owl House led to really good theories. The show I'm into, Lego Monkey Kid, which is by Flying Bark, who also did Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2012, they're one of the better companies out there. And I would say they're better than Disney and Pixar based on animation level because they do 2D animation. You know, and my it's a mix between like look, my teenage Japanese kind yeah. of anime style and modern and what we see with on a TV. I'm gonna show good. I'm gonna show my age right here right now. I hate four kids TV. I hated it, but I will say this: the TMT, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the two th- early two thousands, perfect. I love that show. That was the best TMT Ninja Turtles in I my like, opinion. I like twenty twelve based on its animation because it gave. <laughs> The, he, Sorry, I'm not, I'm not dramatic aggressive or anything. No, no it, it, I'm, I'm trying to word things. One, you want to have story in mind when you do animation. Oh, yeah. So it's just something like just, Turtles. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Turtles. Or just in general. It's your, before you do anything with animation, yeah. story is your number one focus. What can you put in the story? Well, how much can you progress yeah. in the story? Like, my, my, I actually am revamping my story script for season one yeah. of my show which i thought was done oh no it wasn't i was like i realized i could add in more details onto the script for season one of my show based off of season two and season three because another key element that you want to use when you use animation is foreshadowing right hidden details is what we use in foreshadowing animation and i'm not an animation expert i'm an amateur yeah but i notice like small details like Cluing in that your right. character is going to turn evil by slowly shifting the personality, like Star Wars: The Clone Wars did with Anakin. Yeah, much uh, Clone Wars. The was, Clone much Wars did a great movies. job of showing Anakin's character progression yeah. or slash degression. It, Ahsoka's pure character progression yes, in that show was amazing. Yes, they because they and the animation as as the sh- also when a show starts, you will notice the animation quality yeah. is extremely poor, but it slowly gets better. I'm going to bring this up again. Owl House. The pilot was a little ch- chunky and such. Yeah. Teenage Rise of the Mutant Ninja chunky again. Lego Monkey Kid, chunky. My How did you feel about chunky. the... Everything is chunky at first, but then as the animators get on with their... Like, it's like how you perfected art. You do yeah. practice and practice. The smoother the animation is. The flow of it. The pacing is uh, better. Have you seen Mystery... Not Mystery Creek. Um, the Mystery Shack? Yeah. If that's the name of it, right, Mr. Shack? I believe so. No. I don't remember. What was the name of that show? I forgot it. The season, fin- the series from now, if that show is yeah. really. I would, I would even argue that my little, and I'm going to really show that I'm a girl here and say oh, my little pony generation. Four. Oh god. Oh um, god. Hope I might be a nerd and I might be feminine to a certain extent, but I'm not that no, feminine. No, no, right. This is the reason why I'm going to mention. I feel it. some masculinity season, left in me. Season nine. Look at season one of My Little Pony and then look at yeah. the end of the series, including with the movie. The animation style changed. You can even look at it with anime, too. Yeah. Anime, like, Inuyasha is a big, big attribute to that because season one of that show, look at the artwork, and then yeah. you look at season, like, hmm, I don't remember what season they changed. Like, they changed, like, characters, and I realized it, like, off the dime was... 
probably season six or season seven of Inuyasha. You guys can watch that too. Have you seen Fully Cooley? Yeah. What do you think of the animation style for that? What stands about that anime? Again, it's like most other animes. Good. It, it's chunky. I, I will always say that. It's animation random numbers, as heck. It's, yeah, it's random. That's what's great about it. But like, the most important thing is most animation when it starts out is chunky. Then it slowly progresses yeah. into better fluid. Some shows are just right off the bat. May have like one episode where it's like pacing's off a bit. But other than that, it flows so fluidly. I can bring so many examples. Again, Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtles. I didn't like... 12 to 12. Yeah. Lego Monkey Kid, which is made by the same company. Um, I would say Craig of the Creek also did really well. Craig of the game. Creek is amazing. Yeah, that one... That one was the the D&D Owl D&D House. nerds. Owl the House. D&D nerds. The goth chicks. That, yeah, that was um, a good show. Gravity Falls. That one, too. Gravity Falls. That is what I was thinking of. Gravity, Gravity Falls. Falls. Yeah, Have you seen that... that? If I wasn't mentioning... Have you seen the whole series? Yes, I have seen the full series. Okay, the series finale. Series finale. Again, this is why I say it's like... Gravity... Like, the reason why I mentioned Gravity Falls is... When you when you do animation, you p- keep in mind the story, you keep in mind the flow, you keep in mind the pacing, but you also yeah. put weight on the characters. When season one finale, when they... I believe it's season one finale or season one or season two opener, I, maybe it's in between the two, where they open the portal and... Spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Spoilers. Spoiler, spoiler alert. Um, but when they open the portal and Stan's yeah. other brother comes out, look at the character's facial expressions. No matter, like, and I will talk about, I will go into a deep dev, death dive into another one that does this. Yeah. Their expressions, the way their movements are, how May, Mabel looks yeah. like. She had to make a choice and she looks she takes she like winces knowing full well the con- the consequences but trusting her gut you can see like the emotions in the character's body yeah. that's what animation's supposed to do you, you remind me of to... mabel thank you <laughs> you honestly do remind me of her yes. okay honestly but you do another animation that i will mention is one that i have done a deep dive study into i've researched it beyond anything besides Lego Monkey Kid, but that's yeah. because that's my new obsession, and I yeah, would clearly yeah, call it an obsession, yeah, yeah, yeah. is Avatar The Last Airbender. That animation style. Woo! Because here's something that live action does better than most animation, is the constant flow of movement. Characters continue to breathe. Like, when you're talking yeah. and you're breathing and you're going through emotions... After the last Airbender, nothing stands still for long with the characters. Character dynamics, character voice acting, which is another big thing with animation. Oh, yeah. You need your voice actors not to give it their all, but also give, show them chemistry. Like chemistry yeah. with your character voice char- cast is impressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I, I do like two characters that I do, which is Twista, which is this is her voice pretty much, and Dove, which is my normal voice. Yeah. Twister is more British, and Dove is more... American, not, Canadian. American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you just call my voice Canadian? Thank you. No, I... I <laughs> just kidding. Heathen, heathen, heathen. Oh, whatever. I'm, I'm just... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not bashing people from Canada. But... But... Yeah. Yeah, I'm bashing people from Canada. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, your animation style depends on the story, and... Always keep in mind, I will, again, I'm going to keep hammering that point in. Story, story, story. Yeah. That's what matters in animation. As soon as you lose story, as soon as you lose that, you're going to fail. Uh, some some, some, cart- some animated shows do pull off no oh, story, though. Mm, Star of the Forces of Evil, though. That's oh, amazing, yes. Steven yes. Universe, they lost their story halfway through season And that's three. when I went to hack, yeah. And, yeah. and that's what I'm like saying. If you lose the story, your animation is going to go... Prayer. Right, right. Your whole entire your whole entire fan base is going to go crazy. Yeah. This is why when I'm like when I'm writing, I literally put in my all. I put every single detail because I know that the audience, the readers, anyone who is like right. consuming the media will read it and they will envision it. And if it's animation, that envision should be right in front of their eyeballs. Correct. You know what I'm looking. You know what I think would be a great animated show, and they're kind of doing this already. Have you seen Vox Machina? Yeah. The Critical Role animated show. Mm-hmm. What do you like about that show? That actually is. 
I will say, again, while the story isn't, like, as apparent as, like, Lego Monkey Kids influenced the Journey to the West, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender with Buddhism. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's not, there's not a lot of influence in there just yet when you first watch it. But, oh boy, is it fun. And the, cha- and the chaos of, again, your voice cast, your characters, they all kind of just bounce off one another. So you have seen Vox Machina, huh? What? Vox Machina, the D&D. Yeah, uh, I'm saying, like... This you know what I mean? You would love it, the animation style from... No, it's I'm, like, I'm continuing to talk about it. You're, like, the animation style goes yeah. well with, like, the story. Yeah. Ma- not, check that one off the list. You guys got that one down. Action. The action is fluid. It's It has weight, too. Like... When every whenever there's a blow, there's like, this like the muscles of each yeah. character moves and has weight behind it. Yeah. Which is something that I see a lot in a lot of the shows that I like to watch. There, there's weight in character movement, which is something that most shows forget. Plus, it's attention to and like it's like shout out to the D and D community. It's yeah. shout out to the D and D community. The, the attention to detail, like that's another thing when you yeah. do animation. Don't. Don't have bleep it. Yeah. I will bleep myself there. <laughs> Let me yeah. beat myself real quick. Um, don't don't like quit halfway through. I know it's struggling. I know if you're an amateur and you're first starting out, you're yeah. not gonna like your style at first. But practice, practice, practice. I practice more of my art style because it changes, it moves, it right. moves, it flows. Lately, I've been getting into a constant pattern of oh, this is how I draw my characters. Right. While you're doing that, keep like keep some of these attributes in mind. There's weight, and then there's push and pull. Which yeah. is when a character is about to do an action, they'll like, whenever you like lift your head up, you go down yeah. just a little bit and then lift your head up. Always don't like, don't make their head just go right and jerk up. There's like, have a little bit of like gravity on the right. situation. So, and yeah. Keep, also keep in mind, and I'm like giving tips. I feel like I'm giving tips. I have no degree in animation and I feel like I'm, I'm giving so many tips. I only have a certificate in journalism. Look what I'm doing. True. Yeah. I'm an amateur, I will say that, but I learned so much based off others, and that's another thing with animation, is, like, if when you do a TV show, look how much inspiration they get from... Video games. Video games. But, like, and, there's references um, to... There's so many gaming trans- references trans- trans- in like, modern day like animation Shira. shows. Look yeah. she animation versus what it was before, and look where it is now. Look at all the D&D like, references so and... influences. Look at all the D&D references in Adventure Time, all the D&D references in... Vox Machina, so, you know. What I'm saying is, don't like clearly rip it off. But I'm homage. At you a couple series. Homage. Homage. Yeah, but don't like completely rip off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can no. Do a couple, can we? For the last subject, for the yeah. <laughs> Teen Titans Go. <coughs> Teen Titans Go. <coughs> hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Teen Just Titan- die already. No, the Teen Titans Go has one. I will say this: it has one of the worst animation styles. And Flash. It's not because of the. It's not because of the cartoony look. There's unnaturalness. There's no seriousness behind the characters. You know what the most fricked up thing about the Teen Titans Go is? The creators are the people that make it are toxic as heck. Yeah, they are. They literally got a freaking sick handicap kid to come in, make a wish kid to come in. I've told you this before. They had made. They brought in a Make a Wish kid and put him on the show and said, "Hey, look, this kid likes us." Yeah, and like that's just toxic. That, again, and this is why I don't watch, like, Teen Titans Go. I, I tried to watch it, and I couldn't stand the animation style because, again, they, yeah. there's no cohesive story. You need to have a basic plot line. I hate it because they... Sh- a, yeah. When you don't have a plot line, you, the animation is going to go as crazy as your characters and the shenanigans they're going to go through. It's And that my base, is, that's not interesting. My base issue with it dumps on the original fan base. And Yes, because guess what? They forgot the main component. People... Media, any like anyone on this, anyone who's listening to this podcast, anyone can agree on Earth. We don't get, we don't want just a slice of life with like Teen Titans or anything like that, or any sort of media from like beyond from 1990 to 2000s, 1980s to 2000s. Heck, we don't even like, we don't even like Mickey Mouse now because. Yeah. It what do people need? So what do people need? They need story. They want story. They don't want these we random need or Humanity things. needs stories to build. I'm going to quote this. Um, humans need fantasy in order to be human. Yes. And the, that's why one of, my, one of my stories uses so many different elements from everything I've done. Like everything yeah. I'm into, everything. It's just 
everything I've learned from the shows I've watched will be influenced in the show. And you'll see it. You'll see it yeah. someday. Um, yeah. Hopefully when I'm not not angry enough at my script writing skills. So uh, but like, if I had to bring this in a bit, I want to talk about our favorite stuff, the key thing we were going to talk about on this, Vizzy Pop. Yes. Do you like Vizzy Pop? What stands out about her? What do you love about her? I love her animation style because of the fact that it hits every single component that animation is what you use for animation. There's story, there's character movement. None of the characters sit still. Like Luna, like one of the scenes, like in the first episode, Blitz is talking and you can see Luna is scrolling through her phone. There's movement yeah. in the finger, which by the way, this takes a lot of time and patience. So like when we're like talking about these episodes, with a normal studio, it might take months for one, for like, like half a season to be completed. I waited a whole entire like three years for season four to drop for one of my favorite shows. Yeah, I waited six years for a, Fo- a Fox in Space to come out. I'm uh, waiting, yeah. and it took ten years for Hasbun Hotel to come out because yeah. they changed they changed character designs and story, and they changed so much of it. Be- but Hasbun but Hasbun Hotel caused a spinoff called Hell of a Boss, and the reason why I love Hell of a Boss a little bit more than I like Hasbun Hotel, which, oh boy, that might start some. Just say it, preach, sister, it preach. Won't, it it won't. I hopefully this won't cause too much anger, but I like. I know Hasbun Hotel only had the pilot, but I Which? love, I love just Hell of a Boss way more than Hasbun Hotel because characters have chemistry. You can see it in the animation. Yeah, but Charlie. I I know, and and like that's the one thing that's like most people are gonna be like, really, you like Hell of a Boss more? Yes, because character expression. Like in the original, yeah, it was, I would. It was s- mostly humor. Yeah. It was mostly humor. Hell of a Boss tackles so many good dark topics like trauma and things and and abuse there yeah. i will say abuse in this the that's fine why I mentioned that is when you do those dark topics you have to make keep in mind the animation style as well yeah and they did wonderfully on the last episode do you like the writing the characters oh, the yes, lore I love the writing i love the story i love how they built the world that's something else with animation build your world you know the whole point of hell the whole point of hello boss and Hasbun hotel most of these people are good people yeah, they're good and people. the question is why are they down here in the first place and like wait, look you know how There's the theories look at the, there that heaven is corrupt and i totally agree just because have you seen the them. angels and how they treat like mm-hmm. mortal people like they, the episode where the cherubs come down they literally treat their own kind like dirt and like i think the point busy pop is trying i I feel like next time when when we are when we come back on a podcast yeah next friday we will talk about like has been hotel and all the theories and such so keep it so see that soon yeah i will say this i think the key point about what i love about busy pop is like and this is actually a very spiritual thing like you know it kind of represents how organized religion rejects the such great wonderful kind people just because they're different. Yes, and I think and I think and I think that's why she has such a big audience. I believe that's a pronoun, whatever. I believe that's why they have a. I'm gonna say Busy Pop has a day because there's. It once started with only one person. It has now grown to a whole entire studio worth of people. Yeah. So I'm gonna say they because it's everyone. Everyone knows how. to... Busy Pop does great with character designs, which great was great with animation. Oh, the, the her designs are character great. Character voice actors go great with the character design and the animation. Like everything that that they did hits all the checkpoints on how to make a good animated series. You know like, my fr- I want Hell of a Boss on my TV every Friday. Do you you're still you're still gonna watch the next episode of Hell of a Boss? Yeah, so. yeah. You're still gonna watch the next Hasman Hotel, right? Yeah, I'm gonna watch it looks that. amazing, right? Just the art style, the yeah, freaking art style. I just hope they keep the voice actor for Alistair because it won't be the same. Have you seen the one? Okay, two things I'll say before we end this. Two subjects. One's quick. All right. I feel bad for Angel Dust. Angel Dust, uh, yeah. you saw his video. It's just, that's just. That's sad. As a character. We're talking about the character. We'll go more into detail with this. And second, um, would you, what would you, where, would you recommend people to watch Vizzy Pop's content? And what, what show do you think they should watch first? And how do you feel, um, what should they be prepared for going in? I feel like you guys, I feel, because Hell of a Boss, while it's a spinoff, doesn't like directly correlate with Hasbun Hotel. Yeah, yeah. Watch Hell of a Boss first. Get used to Vizzy Pop sort of yeah. writing because it's different than what you see on a TV screen. Yeah. 
then watch Has Been Hotel when it comes out. Watch, but before you watch Has Been Hotel, watch the music video. Addic- addic- Addicted. Thank you. For I love that. that. Yeah, that's good. Um, other things I feel like people should watch for are a couple things that I'm keeping an eye on too. For starters, I saw a movie that's coming out called Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, that animation's good. good uh, that's animatronics. a good one, yeah. Um, Lego Monkey Kid, I'm gonna keep saying you guys should watch it. it because, you know, like, Ninjago and how junk, like, how bad that animation style is? I hate it, Ninjago. It's so different. I hate it, Ninjago. Lego Monkey Kid is so different. I swear, if you like anime style and, and Journey to the West, which if you like anything like Buddhism, you will like Journey to the West. Gotcha. Just watch it. It's fun. Well, thanks for joining us, folks. We'll be here next week. And, uh, till next time, stay sane. Yes. And I think, and I think, and I think that's why she has such a big audience. I believe that's a pronounce, whatever. I believe that's why they have a. I'm gonna say Busy Pop has a they because there's. It once started with only one person. It has now grown to a whole entire studio worth of people. Yeah. So I'm gonna say they because it's everyone. Everyone knows how. To, Busy Pop does great with character designs, which Greg was great with the animation. Oh, the, the her designs are character, great. Character voice actors go great with the character. Design and the animation, like everything that that they did, hits all the checkpoints on how to make a good animated series. You know, like, my fr- I want Hell of a Boss on my TV every Friday. Do you, you're still, but you're still gonna watch the next episode of Hell of a Boss. Yeah, so. yeah, you're still gonna watch the next Hasman Hotel, right? Yeah, I'm gonna watch it looks that. amazing, right? Just the art style, the yeah, freaking art style. I just hope they keep the voice actor for Alistair because it won't be the same. Have you seen the one? Okay, two things I'll say before we end this. Two subjects. One's quick. Right. I feel bad for Angel Dust. Angel Dust, the uh, yeah. you saw his video. It's just that's just that's sad. As a character, we're talking about the character. We'll go more into detail with this. And second, um, would you what would you where would you recommend people to watch Vizzy Pop's content? And what what show do you think they should watch first? And how do you feel? Um, what should they be prepared for going in? I feel like you guys. I feel because Hell of a Boss, while it's a spinoff, doesn't like directly correlate with Hasman Hotel. Yeah, yeah. Watch Hell of a Boss first. Get used to Busy Pop sort of yeah. writing because it's different than what you see on a TV screen. Yeah. Then watch Hasman Hotel when it comes out. Watch but before you watch Hasman Hotel, watch the music video Addict Addict mm-hmm. Addicted. Thank you. For yeah, I love that. that. Yeah, that's good. Um other things I feel like people should watch for are a couple things that I'm keeping an eye on too. For starters, I saw a movie that's coming out called Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, that's that animation's one. good. With uh, the that's animatronics. a good one, yeah. Um Lego Monkey Kid, I'm gonna keep saying you guys should watch it. it because you know like Ninjago and how junk like how bad that animation style I was. hate it, Ninjago. It's so different. I hate it, Ninjago. Lego Monkey Kid is so different. I swear if you like anime style and Journey to the West, which if you like anything like Buddhism, you will like Journey to the West. Gotcha. Just watch it. It's fun. Well, thanks for joining us folks. We'll be here next week and uh till next time, stay sane. That was fun. Hold on a sec. That was fun. Hold on a sec. I'm just myself out.